Breaking down Arizona Wildcats football, our 10th anniversary season on television here in Tucson. I'm David Kelly, joined for another year by Glenn Howe, the tight end, U of A football class of 1985. And Glenn, the Wildcats fall in the season opener in Las Vegas to BYU 24 to 16, the beginning of the Jed Fish era. Let's dive into this. There's a lot of good feeling around this program right now, despite this loss. But, you know, there was a lot of good feeling around this team last year when they had a close loss against USC. This is different, though, Glenn. It's a new regime. It's a new way of doing things. There's a lot of energy from behind the scenes and with this coaching staff. And clearly, the players have bought in to what Jed Fish is trying to accomplish here in Tucson. I think they have, uh, Dave. I was more really paying a lot of attention to how the kids were coming off, the guys were coming off the field and approaching their coaches, how the positive feedback that they're getting and the yelling at them, too. I like what Don Brown was getting into some guys. You know, I really liked that, too. So there was some really good emotion, I thought, that, I, you know, I saw from, from the camera angles they had. And I saw the fight that they had on the field, which was really good to see Arizona Wildcats back again. All right, let's talk about the offense. You cannot argue with what Gunnar Cruz did. He threw for over 300 yards. He had a quarterback rating for 141. I can't imagine there's too many uh, U of A quarterbacks in history whose first collegiate start produced a rating that high. Uh, you know, there were some things he did that I still did not like. He holds on to the ball too long, and that's been my biggest thing with him throughout this process. But Jed Fish saw something there at the end of that second quarter when he kind of started moving the team, and he stayed with him in that second half well I, I think that what's going to happen with gunner when he sees the film he's going to go oh my gosh that guy was wide open. I mean, he's going to see that and it's going to start things going to start clicking for him and you got to remember this he has this this guy hasn't been playing for a while so he's got to get you got to give him a couple games if he's doing this by the fourth game then we should be start talking about what's going on with Gunner. But I think he's going to be a good quarterback. I think he's going to get better every week. And this is going to really show how the coaches are making them better, seeing the film, making them evaluate the film, understand it, making the mindset of doing things the right way on, uh, on their passing game. You know, and Glenn, Jed even admitted, and you kind of alluded to this as well, that he Jed may have been a little bit conservative in the beginning of the ball game, and, and he didn't come out as, as, as aggressively with this offense and the play calling as he wanted to. Yeah, I, I was kind of – I was saying the same thing because I was wondering why we weren't, you know, I'm doing the, the Saturday night quarterback thing, you know, <laughs> after the game. Why didn't we boot away? You know, why didn't we roll out away from the pressure? Because the pressure was coming right up the middle, which we couldn't stop at all. I don't know why we couldn't. And then why didn't we just run away from it and do a bootleg? But you know what? He may have saw something different. He may have said the limitations of Gunner. I don't know that. So I, that's what I would see if I was thinking about I was the Saturday night quarter uh, offensive coordinator. But they must have seen something different. All right, they ran Glenn for in this ball game. They ran for over 100 yards, and I thought one of the things they did was an adjustment they made early when they were struggling was they started blocking down Donovan Lae at that left tackle. Donovan had to move out to that left tackle spot because Jordan Morgan did not play. We don't know what the circumstances surrounding that were, but he was not in there. Uh, but they started blocking Donovan down and then running off his hip, and so I liked that adjustment. It got it going for Michael Wiley and Drake Anderson in the ball game and and you know there's still some work to be done with this offensive line uh, you know Jack Baker came in he had his struggles playing in his first collegiate game just like Gunnar Cruz but they did some things that were effective in that respect in the run game yeah I, I don't think that we dominated the line of scrimmage and I also don't think that we were dominated by their defensive line so I think that we can get better from that point of view as far as dominating the line of scrimmage and making sure we're moving people back. It was almost like a stalemate. I love the way our backs are running. Our backs are running hard. Uh, Anderson, man, that guy's a pound for pound. He's a, is a good back. I mean, he, he gets extra yards. He's pushing the pile. while he's done a great job. I think those guys are a good one-two punch. And once we get that that – running game going, it's going to take a lot of pressure off of Gunner. 
I'm telling you, if we can just get that thing going and uh, and we'll see a better quarterback in Gunnar Cruz. All right, let's flip it over to the defensive side of the ball. Dr. Blitz, Don Brown, in his first uh, coach or his first year as the defensive coordinator here. And one of the things I liked, Glenn, was just the variety that we saw from the defense and the alignments and the ways that they were disguising their pressures. It wasn't like you were looking out there and seeing the same sets every single play. Dave, I was wondering, who is that? Is that Arizona playing out there? We haven't blitzed in 10 years. I mean, it's like it was it was exhilarating to see that, that we were coming with more than just three guys. I mean, it was it was really good to, the angles he was taking, the delay blitz he was doing. I mean, that was really good. We even had a a uh, a quarterback get a uh, tackle for loss in the backfield. We haven't seen that in ages. So we're we're I'm excited about what we can do with our guys up front, and then uh, the other guys on the on the outside and in the corners, and even with uh, with Christian Young. I mean, with with our uh, with our Viper. All those kinds of things. We have a lot of options, and I'm excited about what we can do. Glenn, what did you think of the linebackers? They didn't necessarily make a lot of plays in terms of tackling, but they seemed to find their way into some of those gaps and, and really create a kind of an organized chaos at times that allowed uh, the linemen, the down linemen to make plays, and like you mentioned, some of those defensive backs to come off the edge and make some plays. Well, I think what the linebackers were doing were getting their fits. It's called getting their fits, getting in their – getting into their gaps and making sure that their shoulders are square and doing things and making maybe somebody else is going to make the tackle. I think there should be more tackles. I think when they get in there, they need to get an arm out and get a tackle on there when the guy's going by. I think that's important too, but we'll, we'll get better at that. And we got to remember, these guys were playing in the first game and that first defense that they've ever played in that. And none of those guys have never played in that defense. So I think they're going to get better and they played pretty doggone good for the first game of ever playing in that defense. One area that I would like to see improved, Glenn, is uh, with Jalen Harris and his contain on that edge. He lost contain on a couple of those runs. He chased himself or ran himself out of position uh, on one instance when we saw that where Jaron Hall kind of busted out on that long quarterback run there in the second half. He's got to be better in that respect and holding that edge and not letting those runs get to the outside. Yeah, and, and as an end, you really have to be in control of your body, understand what your what your your outside arm free, making sure that no one gets on the outside and hooks you. And those are kind of things you've got to set that edge. And I think that he's gonna look at the film, he's gonna understand it might have been, I think it might have been some some footwork that he was doing that he wasn't getting in the right position. And you know, he's gonna look at that and make some adjustments. We got to say, I said this in the first in the beginning, is that this is the first time this guy's been in the offense and been in the defense. We got to have a progression of getting better and better every game until we get into that Pac-12 uh, tournament there. When we're playing in, our, in, in the Pac-12, we need to be able to get better and better every game. All right, on the backside, Glenn, what did you see on that play where Malik Hausman got beat for the touchdown? Well, Malik, what I thought I saw in the replay is that he was doing good when he was on the guy's hip, and then, then the guy, the wide receiver Powell, I think he just stemmed him. He went upfield and then cut outside. He took him, made him turn his hips a little bit, and then took him outside, and it was a perfect throw, and that's what got him loose. And, and that's a perfect example of hitting the guy on the run. That's what Gunner has to get better at, doing that, our quarterbacks getting our guys on the run. So our guys are guys in space. Get them going. If they're running fast, get them, let them continue to run fast when they get the ball. And Glenn, I thought the defensive play of the game, and I'm going to show it here with Traden Stukes. I mean, we talk about cornerbacks being out on the island. He's out on a deserted island here because the other 10 guys on defense are all below the top hash. He's the only one out there, and he come, just makes this one-on-one -on -one play here and gets the pass deflection. I mean, that's a touchdown if he does not make that play. To me, that was the defensive play of the ball game. Excellent play. The, the, he, he was on him like a, like a glove. He was sticking on him. And, and these guys are DBs. I got to say our defense, this is the first time we didn't who 
had came into our game, BYU is known for their tight ends. They're known for tight ends making big plays and everything. I didn't hear a peep out of those guys. I mean, those guys, they're they're all pros. They're 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 gonna be pros because they're, they're they got the size, they got the speed. We shut them down. I, that's the first time we didn't make a, a uh, an all American out of a tight end for the opposite team. I mean, it's been great to see that. I think we shut down the tight ends. I think that's what the, uh, Don Brown saw that, that we needed this because he was talking about their tight ends, and we sh- totally shut them down. And I thought that was a great thing that the, that that our defense did. All right, we'll wrap it up on the special teams. Kyle Ostendorp, the punter, I thought he had a really good ball game, put some uh, balls obviously inside the 20, uh, laid the one out at the one-yard line that that led to the safety. Those are things you have to have in terms of of where your special teams are contributing in the course of a ball game. Lucas Haversek, though, missed two field goals. And, Glenn, at the end of the day, Lucas Haversick is who he is. He's a 62% uh, kicker coming into this season, and I, and it might be hard for us to ask him to go from 62% to 75%. I went back to look in the annals, and there's really only one guy that's done that, and that was Nick Falk, and, and, it, and it parlayed him into a 13-year NFL career. He was actually a 55% a kicker going into his senior season and he kicked 75 percent as a senior back in 2006 and he's been in the NFL ever since I mean it, it amazed me that there aren't more kickers in, in the history at least in this century at the University of Arizona in fact there was only one Jason Bonzio going back to uh, uh, eight and nine who or seven and eight who kicked over 80 percent everybody else is under 80 percent in this century yeah, I think, you know, Lucas has got a great leg. We've all seen that, that he has a great leg. It's all between his head. That's what I think it is. He'll get better. He's gonna, We're going to need him. I think we're going to need it because we're going to be in some games where, where, where field goals are going to be important and game winners are going to be important because I think that we're, we're going to get better. As You know, I'm excited about what, we're, what I'm seeing is that we're going to get better. I think we're going to get better on both sides of the ball. And I love that our punting game is good. Uh, that was great to see our coverage and our kickoff return. Cunningham's going to get at least two runbacks, I think, this year. I think he's going to get because he's going to break one. And when guys have a guy back there, they know they can break it. They're going to do a little bit extra on that special teams and getting those blocks for that guy. And I think that was, that's going to happen. We're going to see that soon. Well, getting back to the place kickers, we might have to have Adam Gonzalez over at Sports Information go into the annals and and pull up your guy, Max Zendayas' uh, average to see what he was uh, back in the 1980s. Yeah, because Max, I I don't remember my two years that I started and lining up in field goal. I don't remember hearing it, seeing it it was no good, (laughs) you know, because it. Except for the last one. Was Except the for the last one, yeah. No, the, game. Uh, Georgia, the Georgia game and when we lost. And when we did loss, I thought it was the loss because we tied. Uh, it was a tie game. But uh, I think Max was, was a great kicker. I want, I'm really interested to see what his percentage was. Yeah, there's only been one ever win over an SEC team. I believe it was 1976 against Auburn. You guys could have had the second one, but didn't happen. Yep, we didn't, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. <laughs> Couldn't. Finish it. It's all about finishing in this game of football. All right, coming up, San Diego State at the stadium on Saturday. That'll be the home opener. And, of course, uh, we'll have that preview coming up for you on Saturday. Glenn, as always, appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you. Let's get some folks out there to the game. Let's get at least 45. At least forty-five. All right, you start that. Yeah, exactly. I think I think I, I, have, I have a poll up on my I have a poll poll up on my Twitter page right now. I think we can outdo UCLA in their home opener. They only do thirty-three thousand in their home opener. I, I believe know. they had over sixty for the LSU game the other night, but their home opener was only thirty-three. I think we can do yeah, a yeah. much better job uh, uh, on that against think, San Diego I, State. I, I think we can do that. I think I we think can do that. that. All right, stay with us here at News Four Tucson KVA for continuing coverage of your Arizona Wildcats.